to group different Likert scale items using SPSS, we need to go to transform compute variable. After that, I can just uh, type the name of the uh, composite score, let's say IV. And then I will just go to this function group and click S uh, uh, two times or three times to find statistical. And from the functions and special variables here, I need to choose the mean. So I can just take it uh, to uh, this numeric expression box. And I have two question marks, as you can see, separated by a comma. Uh, so to, to, to just put the items of the each, let's say, uh, construct, we can just double click the item. And then we move to the second uh, place and double uh, click the second item. And then we keep doing this and uh, we put a comma in between uh, each, let's say, uh, mm -hmm. variable or item. Then we can just continue like this till the end. So once we finish, we just uh, click OK. So here we can just label the this, uh, uh, let's say, construct or composite school. We can say it's composite score one and then click continue and okay this one too we can just uh, change it so what will happen is that no variable will be created at the end as you can see here so this is new variable that has been created that is uh, labeled for example composite score then we can do the same for all the other items. Once, once we have the composite scores of one or two or three items, we can run what we call a uh, correlation or regression. To do this, uh, so I have already calculated the composite scores of other uh, items. So we need to run correlation by going to analyze, then correlate, then bivariate. And I'm going to put the uh, composite scores here. For example, IV and DV, and I can just uh, run correlation. If I know that there is positive relationship or negative relationship among these constructs or uh, scores, I can choose one tailed test of significance. If I don't know whether the relationship will be positive or negative, I will put two tail. Again, I can choose the parametric Pearson correlation or non parametric Spearman correlation or both for more uh, validity of the uh, output or what we call sensitivity analysis. I suppose that we don't know the direction of the relationship and we want to use parametric and non-parametric inferential statistics. I put them both. If I have a species version 26 or rather 27 and above, I can just make this in EPA and show only the lower triangle. Click OK. And here are the results as you can see. So there is a statistically significant uh, a strong positive correlation between IV and DV, and this relationship is estimated at 78.5%. The same result is shown also by a Spearman correlation that uh, just shows it's 77.8 70, uh, and not 78. So, but still it's more or less the same uh, impact. This is the sample size. This is the Pearson correlation coefficient. This is the Spearman row. The correlation coefficient. And this is the uh, direction of the hypothesis. It's two tailed with 0 0.01 significance level. Now we move to a regression. We need to go to analyze and then regression and then linear. And I'm going to put the uh, composite scores for the IV here. Uh, if I'm using simple or multiple linear regression, and I put the DV here. And uh, I can just click OK, or I can choose other statistics. Let's say I want to test collinearity, I want to test uh, descriptive stats, I want to test Darwin and Watson test. So I, whatever I choose here, it will be uh, tested in the output. Even the plots, if I want to have plots, I can put the Z predictor in the X axis and Z residual in the Y axis and click continue. I, if I want to save this, I can just have some uh, Malanobis distances or Cook's distances for uh, outliers. 
So I, I just can run a lot of tests within just this menu of regression. And those tests are what we call the assumptions of regression. So I click console and then I click OK. And here is the output of regression. So we can interpret it. So this is the variable entered and removed. It will show you the method used. This is the dependent variable. The model summary uh, shows the R and the R square. So it shows the correlation. So it's 81.4 uh, uh, correlation coefficient. Uh, then we have the ANOVA table. This ANOVA doesn't test the difference, but it tests what we call uh, model fit, and it should be statistically significant. In this case, it is statistically significant. Therefore, the model fits the data. Then the coefficients. Here we have the unstandardized coefficients. We have uh, the beta, and then we have the significance level. And then we have the variance inflation factor and tolerance level for collinearity. So the variance inflation factor should not exceed 5. So it's good here. It's almost uh, moderately good. And then the, the, the impact of IV and IV2 uh, are statistically significant at 0 0.01. The impact of IV1 is 48.9% positive and IV2 uh, is 40 0.5% uh, positive impact. And this is called linearity diagnostics and other statistics. Uh, this is the scatter plot. We can also draw a line uh, here. So, and add even the uh, equation. So we can just uh, use these tables and the graph to interpret the results of regression and test the uh, null and alternative hypotheses. So if you have other questions or remarks, kindly post them below.